flashbacks have been used in storytelling probably since human beings have been telling stories. And it's evolved in cinema and in literature. It's also an amazing technique for role-playing games. So in this video, I want to tell you sort of why and how flashbacks work so well and they work so hard for us in our games. And in particular, share how you can use them to make beginnings that are memorable and meaningful and a lot of fun. is nothing worse than starting in the tavern with your characters all assiduously ignoring that shady figure in the corner that's supposed to give them their mission. Fortunately, the flashback is a pretty much perfect antidote to this kind of weak, weedy beginning, right? Probably the easiest way for me to explain and break down how this all works is just by example. So we're going to take an example from the One Shot Hot Shots playthrough of an adventure called A Sinking Feeling. First, here's the setup. Opening scene, you find yourself on a, a min here, a small collection of rocks in the middle of a vast badlands known as the Fallen Lands. To your left, um, faint crackling thunder and lightning in a cloudless sky, and to your right spreads the Anorak Desert, a near endless expanse of sand. Okay, so we're deep in the Badlands with this kind of evocative scene. And of course, the question on everyone's mind is, how on earth did we get here? Well, I'm glad you asked. As you are rubbing a bit of that sand out of your eyes and peering around bleary-eyed at this desolate and deity-forsaken place, we flash back to how you got here. Three days earlier in the sleepy town of Parnast on the uh, road uh, through the Anorak Desert uh, in a tavern called uh, the Mellow Sater. You find yourselves in front of a an elf, an elf by the name of Baron Gold Petal. Okay, so several days earlier, the mission giver gives some exposition now about this caravan that's gone missing, and then he concludes with, It was spotted by Griffin Cavalry several days ago, but the caravan was not moving. Do not know if they are alive or dead. I would ask you either way to find out what happened and bring news back to me. As I said, you would be making an important friend. And of course, there is a monetary reward. So he's mentioning some possible likely rewards. Um, so then finally, the big key with all of this, having thrown all that out, is to turn it back to the players. And so you think back upon your motivations, your character's reasons for wanting to undertake this obviously dangerous quest out into the middle of nowhere to try and recover this lost caravan. And Marshall, you are musing as you look out across the vast expanse and a sort of gently rippling mirage. So you're literally asking the players to help you figure out why the characters are here. They may all have their different motivations, right? It's money or making a powerful friend or saving people, being a hero, going on an adventure. Whatever it is, you write it down because these are the motivations and rewards that they're telling you outright matter to them. So run in this way, the flashback does several things at once. First, we get an end media rest start, a start like where the action happens, where things are getting good and interesting. Um, it establishes the start without a huge amount of setup and it grabs everyone's attention. As soon as you got their attention, pause, change scene. Now we can go into the exposition, which is also equally interesting because we're asking, we're answering why, why, how do we even get here in the first place? Then the big key, we turn it back to the players, give them the opportunity to explain how and why their characters got from point A to point B where they find themselves now. So the burden of explanation is on them. Well, often the most uh, harsh circumstances make for uh, great tales. Now, it's a foregone conclusion that we're starting here and the, the DM has chosen this starting point. Isn't that robbing the characters uh, of the players of the characters' agency? Isn't that a great sin? No, no, not at all. The players agreed that they wanted to play with you. They wanted you to be the DM and they consented that you got to start somewhere, right? And we all want excitement. We want an exciting beginning. We want an exciting adventure. We want an exciting, satisfying ending. So why not start at the first exciting point in the adventure? Then when you flash back to fill in, you create a kind of dynamic tension at that point. Actually, you're giving the players a lot of agency to state their own goals, which you're then going to use to entice and reward them along the way, making something that's a highly collaborative adventure, setting it up that way from the get-go. 
There's lots else I could unpack about the flashback and the dynamics of it. In particular, the whole camera one, camera two approach, right, of pausing and, and shifting scene. Um, I actually talked about that a bit in a video um, called something like, you should always split the party. So if you want to check that out, you can. I might talk a little bit more too about um, cliffhangers in the future, particularly cliffhanger endings and how fun those can be, particularly in a campaign mode. Um, and just, you know, the fact that time doesn't have to be linear, right? Some of the best dramas, time is absolutely not linear. So another thing we could talk about in a future episode is, of course, the montage. So let me know what you guys think. Um, have you used the flashback before? Are you interested in using it? Are there other topics you'd like me to address in relation to this or, or really anything else? Uh, love to hear from you in the comments. Meanwhile, I hope this was useful. Talk soon.